We have a political war brewing, yet within the chaos there is a lone wanderer sneaking between the clearings, helping out with the Woodland Alliance, assassinating the Marquise, and having a trade relationship with the Eerie. But what will you do as the mischievous vagabond? En route by Later Games. Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board, this is Sam, and today we are going to be in the shoes of the Vagabond, a creature who is stuck in the middle of the feuds going on between the other large factions. Instead of controlling an entire army, you're just one single pawn. You're just one single point in this story that can make a huge impact for either side and for yourself. And I am here to help you navigate and play this character. We are also going to go over the different Vagabond classes. So grab your best root tea as we go through 10 tips and strategies on how to play the Vagabond. So stay tuned and thank you for watching. As the Vagabond, you should be looking at all of the cards and items and player boards. Your goal is to realize and identify what you can collect this turn and what items are available to you. I recommend at the beginning of every turn just checking and looking around at every player board, making sure that their position on the board is not super strong because you will be that person to keep other factions in check. The Ruins tiles are a complicated mechanic. When I played games without the Vagabond, I was so angry by the Ruins never moving, especially as the Marquise. And as the Vagabond, sometimes it can be worth it to keep Ruins tiles on the board to slow down your enemies and force them to combat each other more. When aiding other factions, always be aware which cards you are giving them. Keep away from giving birds to any faction. Also, if a player has better crafting capabilities, you can give them a card in hopes that they craft it to begin an alliance and gain the items that you need. The Thief is a very balanced choice. Starting with a sword gives you some early protection. Highlight the use of his ability. Card gaining is great as you can trade them back with an aid action. The Tinker is by far the most powerful crafter and the only Vagabond with the ability to craft favor cards. Tinkerers need to attempt to play under the radar for as long as possible. Starting the game off with no swords or crossbows is a weak entry into the game, but with clever use of the crafter, the Tinkerer can achieve victory. The Tinkerer can also perform multiple favors of the same suit because once used, he can use his ability to grab the favor card from the discard pile. The Ranger starts the game in a powerful position. Powerful in the way of swords and crossbows at least. When playing the Ranger, you will want to attempt high infamy scoring, using the crossbow to gain hostility versus opposing factions, and then using swords to attack the freshly hostile enemy. Having the ability to repair on the go can lend to more bold attacks. The Arbiter has the most powerful start to the game, boasting two swords. Definitely choose an enemy faction quickly to begin gaining infamy points early game. And as the Arbiter, be sure to position yourself in locations that conflict will likely occur. With the amount of swords you can have, opponents would rather you be an ally to them than an enemy and they will use your special ability, which will in turn gain you victory points.
The Vagrant is the master of disruption and alliances. Having the ability to effectively make two opposing factions combat each other can be used as leverage when building alliances. In games with the Revolutionary Alliance, you can send opponents fighting them to really hurt them. A coalition victory can be powerful, so look for opportunities to aid the weakest faction. Also, he is the only Vagabond to start the game off with a coin, and with that, that will increase your card draw, which just further helps with trading and aiding other factions. The Scoundrel, like the Vagrant, can cause divide and disruption. Use your ability as leverage against other players. You have by far the coolest ability in the game. You also start the game off with two boots, which gives you the possibility to have more mobility than any other Vagabond in the game. I would recommend playing the Scoundrel after playing a few games of Root, because you will learn the importance of certain clearings as well as what you can leverage against each and every faction with your ability. The heart of the Vagabond is looking at your options each and every turn and taking advantage of those opportunities that arise. Will I gain more points by exhausting items for infamy points, crafting points, aiding or questing? The key to success is identifying all opportunities and exposing the best ones each and every turn. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. This has been a blast to make, and I hope that next time you approach playing the Vagabond with your friends, you are able to feel more comfortable doing so. But before you go destroy your friends in Root, why don't you consider dropping a like, comment, and subscribing, as well as if you enjoyed content like this, don't forget to click that bell notification, as that will let you know when the next video releases. But with that, that's it for the Mangy Vagabond. Let's drop the beat.